In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this really awesome loading animation inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So step one on this tutorial is to go up into this option here. This is the ellipse tool, although by default it might be the rectangle tool. And we're just going to drag down to the rounded rectangle tool. Then from there, we want to go to fill and we want to select the word, not the box. So fill options. And we're going to select no fill, so none. Then we'll go to stroke and make sure stroke is enabled with a solid color. Press OK and then increase the stroke here. So let's start with maybe five or six, but we can change this later on. You can also change the color of this if you wanted to, but again, this can be changed at a later date. Now I'm just going to turn on the proportional grid and then I'm just going to draw the outline of my loading animation in the center of the composition. Then we'll turn off proportional grid and you can see we've got the basics of our loading animation. So from here, we'll go into shape layer, go to add and select trim paths. This is going to give us the ability to animate the outline. So that stroke to animate it in. So we'll go into trim paths, go to end and pull that down to zero. Create a brand new keyframe on zero at the beginning. Scroll over maybe two seconds and increase that to 100%. And this is what we have. Not very dynamic at the moment though. So let's convert those keyframes to easy ease keyframes. So select both, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Now we're going to select that second keyframe, go to the graph editor. And as you'll see, this is what we have. So let's just zoom in. You can see we're easing out of the first keyframe and easing into the second keyframe. Now, if we grab this yellow handle, and pull that all the way to the left, it's gonna make a much more dynamic animation. You can see it's quite quick to begin with, but then it slowly comes into its resting position. And that's the power with graph editing your keyframes. So feel free to pull these yellow points around until you get to an animation that you are happy with. I quite like the look of this. And then once you're happy, you can just click out of the graph editor. And from this point, I'm gonna increase my stroke width to 10 is going to help it to look more defined. So this is where we are at. From there, we are going to want to create the filling or the loading animation. So we're going to copy that shape layer. So command C, command V on Mac, or that is control C, control V on Windows. Now we're just going to lock the top one and we're just going to work on the bottom one. So we're going to delete trim paths. We don't need that for now. We're going to go into the rectangle in content delete stroke and we're going to turn on fill and by default you will see that has turned red not the prettiest shade now i'm not going to put a fill color here i'm going to put a nice soft gradient so i'm going to go into the effects and presets tab so let me just close these down you can search for ramp and that's going to give us a two color gradient or alternatively you can go for four color gradient, and that will give you an even softer gradient so i'm going to go for that you can see these colors actually look really nice to begin with, but I'm just going to go in and make a few adjustments. I'm going to maybe go for an orange and pink color scheme. So I'm going to delete the, the green and the blue. And I think something like this is going to look nice, although I will need to increase the blend just to create a nice softer animation. So this is what we have. Obviously, there is no animation on this bar at the moment, so that is our next step. So from here, I am just going to go into transform and I'm going to move the anchor point over to the very left. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can grab this point and just physically move it. Although sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to grab that. So if you're having that problem, then just physically go down into transform and just move it that way. So we're just going to make sure that this is perfectly sitting on that line. So zoom all the way in. Make sure it's not sitting here. Make sure it's not there. Make sure it's bang on the edge of that. So somewhere around there. There we go. That'll do. Then you want to go towards the point where the animation on the outline has appeared and then just move the position over to the left and make sure there is no overlapping whatsoever. So if we click out of that, you can see there is no overlapping. So now we can go through to the point where that outline animation is finishing up. So somewhere around here. Go to scale, we'll deselect the horizontal and the vertical scale. So we're going to unlink them. Then we're going to go to that first option and pull that down to zero. Now we'll create a brand new keyframe on scale. 
will go however long you want this to run for. So maybe 10 seconds or so. We'll go all the way to that point and increase that to 100. Now, when we play this back, you can see that is now animating in. Now, again, if you wanted to make this look more dynamic, then we can go into the graph editor and edit those keyframes again. So we're going to highlight both of those, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Then we'll select the last one, go into the graph editor option, which is here. And again, feel free to play with these points. So by pulling both of them over to the right and the left, by doing this, it means the start point and the end point are going to be slow. And then the middle is going to be quick. So it takes a while for it to start, then it speeds up and then it slows back down. Or alternatively, maybe it starts quicker. So by doing this, it starts quick and then it slows down towards the end. Completely your call, but just have a play with this. Make sure you get this to the point that you are happy with. So that's quite nice. It starts really quick and then it slows down into here. But once you are happy with that, you can exit the graph editor. Now on playback, I noticed there is one thing I forgot to do earlier, and that is to round off these edges here. These are currently straight edges and we want to round them off just to make them look a little bit more appealing. So to do that, we'll just go on to that top layer, which we locked. We'll get into contents, into rectangle one, into stroke, and then we want to go to line cap and change that from a butt cap to a round cap. And you'll see that it's changed it to a round cap there. So from here, the only thing left to do now is to add the physical number onto this. So this is going to be the count up from zero to 100%. So to do that, we'll press the T icon, select anywhere on the video and type zero. Now, feel free to change the font if you want to. You can change this to any font you want. Feel free to decrease the size and then place this in place. So I'm going to place this towards the right, I think. I think that might look nice. You could put it below, you could put it to the right, you could put it to the left. But basically choose wherever you want this to go. Now we'll go into effects and presets and search for slider control. We're going to drag that on to zero. And then we'll go into the zero layer. We'll go into effects, go to slider control. And you can see slider is set to zero. Now we're going to go through to the point where this gradient starts to animate, which is around here. We'll go to slider control and create a brand new keyframe on zero. Now we'll go through to the point where this ends, which is here. And we'll pull this up to 100. Now you'll notice nothing has happened and that is because our source text is not linked to the slider. So we'll go into text, source text, and we are going to grab the pick whip tool from the source text, making sure this is all the way back at zero. Grab this pick whip icon or this spiral icon and drag this to the slider. This is linking the source text to that slider value. So anything the slider value is, so in this example, 39.56, this will become 39.56. But the problem is you can see there are many, many, many decimal points here. So to get rid of that, we need to add an expression in. Now, if you don't know what an expression is, an expression is basically a little bit of code for your animation. It sounds complicated, but I'll show you what I'm on about. So you want to go into your source text, go into the drop down arrow and you'll reveal this expression. Now go to the end of that, create a new line. And now we want to type out the code dot value dot to fixed open bracket zero. You want to finish it off with a close bracket. Then at the end of that, we'll create a space. Then we'll put plus space. Then we want to go speech mark. So these are two lines. Then we'll go for percent. And then we'll go for speech marks again. And then you want to click out rather than pressing enter because enter will break the code. And as you'll see, we have now got this animating up. Now for your convenience, rather than having to copy this down and listen to me going through character by character, I have left this expression in the description below. But once you've done that, you want to make sure that your text is right aligned. So we'll go into the character window and you want to make sure your paragraph is right aligned. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to place this on the right and we want this all to animate like this. Of course, you can convert these slider keyframes again so we can select right click keyframe assistant, easy ease go into the graph editor and you can see you can control these points so you can mimic what you've done with that bottom gradient. So something like this, 
and that is how that would look. But once you've done that, we need to center this up. So we just need to go layer, new, null object. Then make sure you click out of the graph editor. Select all of the layers except for the null. We'll go into this parenter link box and select null one. And now once you've done that, you can go into the null, go into transform, and you can just position this back into the center. And of course you can scale this down and place this wherever you want this to go. But once you have done that, you'll notice you have now got this really cool animation happening. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. Hopefully you found this educational and you've now learned a really cool technique. And if you did enjoy this video, then please consider checking out one of my other videos by watching this playlist just up here. But thank you for watching and hopefully I will see you on a future video. See you there.